when we talk about the 80 percent, we talk about 80 percent of men who are unattractive to women. Okay. So the guys who are in the 80 percent, the beta male 80 percenters that women would never like consider, they got to figure something out. They got to, well, you know, I'm not all that good looking. Um, I'm, I'm five foot six or five foot nine, whatever it is. I'm average at best, right? What can I do to go from ordinary to extraordinary? Well, maybe I can build a multi-million dollar empire. Maybe I can build a talk show that is nationally syndicated for 25 or 21 years, right? Maybe I can write a book and make a shit ton of money off of this book. Maybe there's some way, there's some end run around my station. How do I change my stars, right? Is there some way that I can go from this 80% at least into the 20% so that women will want to fuck me? And even if they can't, I need to make enough money so I can pay them so they're good actresses when they do fuck me. How do I go about doing that? Well, there's a certain percentage of those guys who do that. They figure it out. They're smart motherfuckers. <laughs> they figure it out. And so they build empire. And as a result, they build empires. The problem that they have is they're still very much blue pill conditioned and they can't think in any other way. So what happens is when they get that success, when they build that empire, whatever that empire may be, part of the, the responsibility of that success or part of the the influence of, that influence that success is the belief of this, you know, uh, monogamous relationship, uh, male, one man, one woman, um, whatever, you know, anything that Andrew Tate has probably pr promoted is a, the opposite of that, unless you're making a shit ton of money and now he's a really great guy, right? But what happens is the secret to their success is it not, ne is not necessarily their entrepreneurial spirit or their, 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 their talent set or their drive or, you know, no days off, right? Like it's not so much that, right? They'll want, they want to, when they're talking about their wives or they're talking about intersexual dynamics, they don't know any other frame of reference than happy wife, happy life. And I talked about that with Jedediah Bila not too long ago. Happy wife, happy life is an ultimatum. And that's been making the rounds too. But the idea is this, is that the reason why they're successful or part of the reason is because they had a strong woman, like behind every successful man, there's a, there's a strong woman supporting him. This, and what guys like that do is they take that and they run with it and they turn her into the secret of their success. The problem is when those guys take their wives or they take that woman and they elevate her because they pedestalize her and they build her into the the secondary brand or they make her the cfo or they make her something else thank you oh boy here we go hold on thank you pp i love you too thank you for that you're always so generous i'll come back to you yeah my better half I made this, I, I've, uh, again, this is the uh, self-deprecation thing. If you've read, uh, you want to talk, you want to talk about Iron Rules of Tomasi? Nobody ever wants to talk about this one. It's the ninth one. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That's a, that's the title of the essay that it was from. It's self-deprecation, right? A lack of game is not itself game. Like, oh, I'm just a piece of shit. Oh, I'm just a, you know, I, you know, the Lord must have smiled upon me because uh, I can't think of any other reason why my wife would be with a scumbag like me or schm schmuck like me. And most guys, and by the way, uh, most powerful men, uh, including the ones I've described thus far, have been that way. They still are that way in most, in some cases, even the guys you would think are repo. <laughs> oh, she's my soulmate. She's the one. She's the secret of my success. I couldn't have been. I couldn't have done it without her. She's the little lady. She's my better half. Uh, I can't think of, uh, I can't, um, I can't imagine a world with that. I can, I, I could never live with her. And what they do is they end up putting that woman into that male space. And as you know, if I talk about male space, it's all over. Right? And so what happens is they build an empire and they bring that woman into that male space. And because they're still blue pill, because they still have that mentality of she must become I must become less so she must so she can become more. I need to be supportive. That's there's never there really since the post sexual revolution there has never been a more damaging I think meme than I need to be supportive of my wife. No, no you don't. <laughs> In fact, that's like it's a kiss of death, dude. But you will never hear a guy like maybe you heard me say this. I if I were to say my wife by the way is not on social media. 
you will not find her on social media, then there's a reason for that. She will never be a part of this show. End of story. Will never be a part of this show. She will never show on. Now, people have met my wife. Justin Waller has met my wife. Um, let's see. Miguel has met my wife. Sterling Cooper has met my wife. Not in that way. <laughs> um, he's, he's met my dogs too. <laughs> uh, Tom from, the, he was their, their support guy, uh, has met him. I'm trying to think who else has met. Oh, uh, Aaron Clary. Aaron Clary has met my wife. And I've showed pictures of my wife to other people, but she will never be a part of the show. She will never be an integral part of the show. She will not be running this show. She will never be influencing this show because I understand the nece- It's like the separation of church and state. It's the separation of, of, of empire and woman. That's very, very important. And I mean that in the sense like, are they going to be women in the red pill? Yeah. Okay. But are they going to be the doer, the movers and the shakers? Probably not. Are they going to be influential on this show? No, they're not. Am I? Will I do their their shows and select few maybe just to you know, like Jed and I, I like uh, Tori I like, but they're, pro- they're I'm very selective when it comes to those kinds of things because I understand that people will say, oh, Rolo's simping for Jed, Rolo's simping for Tori. Rolo, I, I can't go and have a relationship with, and I mean relationship, a business relationship with any woman in this sphere without somebody going, oh, you're you're simping. You just open your fucking mouth and you're simping. It's like. You know, I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. But I will tell you this, there will, you will never see the day when my wife is like right here next to me and we're running a show tag team. You know why? Because I have gone to enough, <laughs> I've gone to enough church sermons on Valentine's Day where the pastor has to drag his wife up on stage to deliver the sermon. That's why. I taught, I learned, when I was doing the research in the background for uh, for religion, for my fourth book, that was what convinced me that I would never have my wife on a show. And she doesn't want to be. She doesn't want to be on. She's old school, man. She doesn't even want to be on on social media. She has no Facebook. She has no Twitter. She has no Instagram. She has nothing. I mean, she might have an Instagram, but I think it's just like a lurking account. You'll never feel that. You should, you, it's like probably some random thing. She just does that so she can watch my daughter, I think. Other than that. You're never going to find her because she simply doesn't have it. And it's not because I'm like, oh, I don't want you to. I told this bitch she should never have an Instagram. That She just doesn't want one. That's how she is. But she will never be an, inst- an integral part of this show. And I've seen guys who have ruined brands as a result of that. Now, in getting back to my, my point here, the getting back to the positive masculinity in there, I mentioned, uh, I told a story. In fact, maybe I'll just tell the story right now. There's, you'll find this in positive masculinity. I used to have a business partner. He was, uh, I guess I can say his name. His name was uh, Dave Andeville. And he was the prince. I don't know if he's even still alive or quite honestly, because he was kind of old last time I saw him. But Dave was, he used to be a principal uh, partner in Kettle One in, in vodka. And as you know, I worked on wine spirits for a long time. Uh, I love him like a grandfather. I, I, Dave's a great dude. But he made really bad decisions when it came to women. And so at one point when, when he's going through divorce and he's on financially responsible, or he's, you know, he's actually trying to work through a really ugly divorce financially. And I won't get into too much details, but just suffice to say that generating capital to start a new project became an issue because a lot of people who would have normally funded him didn't want to fund any new projects because he's with this other woman now and they don't, they don't, it's not so much about his business acumen. It's not about his history. It's about the history of the decisions that he makes because they don't know that they're going to be paid back. They don't know that they're going to get a return on their investment because they're working with a guy was very much blue pill. They didn't, of course, they didn't know it was blue pill, but they didn't want to work with a guy with that kind of history. So when I see shit like this, he's willing to cheat on his wife. No, Matt, it's just, he's, it's just looks, it's, but the looks, it's the beginning of it. Yeah. You know, looks is the beginning of it. So you got to discipline your, your, your eyes, your heart, your mind, because the eyes are a portal to the soul. Okay. This is the last guy I would start a business with because I can tell you right now, that his wife is the focus of his life. She's not a compliment to his life. She's the focus. So much so that he still buys into pedestalizing not only her, but womankind. I wouldn't start a business with the guy because he's very much blue pill. And those guys are the ones that get rolled when it comes to having their 
empires assumed, subsumed, destroyed, assimilated by wives or by women in general over the course uh, over a while. So when I'm looking at a guy like say like the guy my my the guy in, uh, Dave in the uh, in the white spirits, you know, I learned a valuable lesson that day like okay, they don't want to have anything to do with him not because <laughs> not because they don't think he can do this product, it's because they don't want to be on the hook, they don't want to lose their investment because they don't trust the guy to make a good decision with the next chick that he's fucking. Same thing with uh, with uh, like like I don't want to say like Kiyosaki is a special case here because he actually became a red pill later on in his life and he's you know now he's on show saying man I should have cheated <laughs> whoa and that's not on brand for your Hollywood marriage well at at this point at seventy five you don't give to you burn it all down you don't give, you don't care about nothing you got a guy like like Dr Phil and suddenly I'm saying, you know what? You sound like you think you're kind of superfluous and he loses his shit. Well, yeah, because his the power couple image of him and his feminist wife. Yeah, you got to keep those to keep up appearances. Um, if you look at Tammy and you look at Michaela, I've, I've got people coming in, in my DM saying that they saw they watched. Um, I think uh, Peterson is in Australia right now. And I have people in my, my Instagram DMs and they're saying. Is Tammy like an, is she part of the show right now? It's like the same thing. I, a question I was asking when I went on that daytime talk show. Um, like, is, is she part? I'm like, I don't know. I, I haven't seen. I've never seen him live. I don't know whether she is or she isn't. Because apparently now Tammy Peterson is, in some way, trying to at least present the the appearance that she's some somehow equitable or heir apparent to the Peterson Empire. Because now she's on shows with them. She's doing shit like, like I said before, Mrs. T Mrs. Tomasi will not ever be on this show, nor will she ever share a stage with me. And not because I'm a dick and not because I'm selfish or whatever. It's just simply, that's just how it works. And she doesn't want, she, first of all, she doesn't want to. Second of all, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to dilute, I'm not going to dilute this, the rational male empire that way. And that's how people lose their businesses. That's how they lose their minds. That's how they lose, they lose in divorce. Uh, so I, I don't know, I've, I haven't seen this, but like people were giving, like I had multiple people, I, at least a half a dozen people tell me that they were at the, was it Adelaide or was it Melbourne? I can't remember where it was, but somewhere in Australia. And apparently Tammy's a big deal. Part of his wife, Tammy Peterson is now a part of the actual show and like taking questions and shit like that. Like she's like, now she's like, Oh, here's Mrs. Peterson. She'll answer some questions. Like my, it's like the, the mom and dad of, of the nineties. I'm like, is that where we're at right now? I've seen uh let's see. Um, I have a guy, I have a friend of mine who uh, his name, he was one of my personal counseling. Um, let's call him like Bernie. Okay. He, not his real name, but, he had built himself up. He was an options trader, a hedge fund manager. I can't remember. He's a financial guy. Built up a very strong financial empire. And in his, he found my work, of course, and I started work with him and counseling him and everything else. But the uh, the long and the short of it is, is his wife, he was in a sexless marriage for probably the last 30 years of his, I want to say like almost 50 years of marriage. Guy's getting into his 70s, getting zeroed out, and his wife and his daughter are trying to take over his business because they want to present, they want to like say he's seen, he wasn't seen out. Trust me. I, I told work with the guy was not in any way in cognitive decline, but was being sort of rolled by the, well, probably now ex-wife, but currently the, at the time they were married and one of his daughters because they wanted that empire. They wanted to, they wanted to take what dad had. They wanted to, they want, okay, let's get him to the old folks home. Let's like, he, like he, get him out of here. You know, mom, you're not getting any younger. Um, you know, we need to, we need to make some decisions here. And essentially it's like the, when your family and your wife become sort of like vulture capital or vultures over your empire, that's when you gotta, you gotta really, you know, consider things. That's when you really, that's when you want to talk about a red pill. That's really tough to swallow. That's especially at 73 years old and you realize all of your successes and everything you've done up to this point, you've done in spite of the fact that you are very blue pill. You've been blue pill conditioned because what happens, a lot of guys have a tough time processing that. The processing is like, oh my God. Like when guys go through the anger phase of like becoming red pill, it's not anger at women. It's anger at, oh shit. 
This isn't really how things are working. I can't believe I believed all of this. I can't believe I believed all this bullshit. For, we're not actually playing by this set of rules. We're playing by another set of rules. Holy shit. And here I am 75 years old and I've created an empire, but I've created an empire in spite of the fact that everybody is playing by one set of rules and I'm playing by, or, or and everybody else is playing by another. And so the anger is not directed so much at like women, it's during, directed at themselves for having believed the bullshit for so long. That's what I said. And again, now we come full circle. That's why I emphasize the importance of advice and influence okay? because nobody wants to hear shit. And then when suddenly reality is too unignorable and they have to become red pill in some way, whether it's through me or God or through catastrophe, that's when you go, oh my God, I, I'm 70, I'm, I'm Robert Kiyosaki. I'm worth hundreds of a hundred million dollars. Or maybe he's worth more. And this is really, I should have cheated. That's, you want to know where that comes from? That comes from, he's not mad at women. He's mad at himself for not fucking more bitch. I'm Robert Kiyosaki. Fucking A. <laughs> right. I don't know how you can go. and I can do whatever you want. It's like uh, Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods figured out he was Tiger Woods. <laughs> it's like, I got a beautiful, you know, bikini, Swedish bikini model and got a couple of beautiful kids and I've been holding up appearances, but I'm going to run down to Blue Martini in Orlando and I'm just going to go bang random escorts and take them back to the, take them back to the, uh, the yacht, the super yacht. And he, because he realized... <laughs> Well, why? Why am I doing this? I'm fucking, I'm, I'm Tiger Woods. I can go do it if I want to. And he did. And it probably still is right now. Who knows? Good go. The only, his only, his, his failing was that he didn't see it sooner. So when you got a guy like, well, I don't say Tiger Woods in particular, but when you got a guy that's of that same kind of caliber, that, that same kind of power, who suddenly realizes late in the game that he's, you know, he's got an empire here. Um, you know, that maybe he wants to, maybe that's the time. And then you look back and you go, oh my God, I made all these decisions as a, in a, a blue pill paradigm. And now I'm red pill. And I'm like, oh fuck my life that could have been, you want to know where, um, like midlife crisis has come from. It's not a midlife crisis. It's men realizing they go, the fuck have I been doing all this time? I, I'm, I'm 38. I'm on top of my game. I still look fucking good. Chicks want to get with me all the time. I should not have gotten married at 25, but I did. And now, you know, now I am, I'm in a sexless marriage. Now I'm in whatever, right? Now I'm, now I'm, and maybe you're making a lot of money. Like Gary V, for example, right? Gary, Gary V and his wife like split up not too long ago. And now Gary V is with a hot piece of ass, right? Who works for him, by the way. You want to talk about, you know, women destroying empires? Just give it a little longer. Sooner or later, the influence will be there. And even if you don't see it and you see a powerful man and he starts mouthing off shit like this. And if you look at girls left, right, and you're breaking your neck, snapping your neck, looking and checking women and you're married, there's something wrong with that. Because yeah. if you're willing to do that to your wife, what about me? Okay. What about you? Yeah. Maybe you're realizing that you're all your, that's your value. Whether or not you're going to cheat with them or not is your, is immaterial. That's what I'm talking about. So, oh, well, does that mean Rolo says he should cheat? No, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that guys with that mentality are the lot, the guys who are going to, are the most likely to try to gaslight you, first of all, to police your thoughts. And then second of all, they're the ones that are most likely to drag their wives into their business organizations and put them into positions of influence and power. And then later, when they get divorced, it, it destroys their empire. And all of that stuff and all the equity and all the shit and all that, all that bullshit talking about, you know, no days off, all that, you know, drive, 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 uh, you know, uh, entrepreneurship, whatever. I don't know. Uh, you know, focus on, focus on your career, man. Focus on, you know, chase excellence, my friend, all that chasing of excellence, just right down the fucking toilet because you didn't realize that women should only be a compliment to your life and never the focus of your life. Never go in here. I'm going to give you, here's a prescription. Never go into business with a guy with that mentality. Never avoid guys like that, like the fucking plague. Because the guy who is pedestalizing his wife, the guy who introduces his wife as his better half, the guy who, who, who tries to lift her up, he becomes less so she can become more. He can't believe his luck. You know, God in heaven above must have shined the angels light down on top of them. And this, you know, woman deigned to even talk to him or, or better yet, he had to like court her. 
And he had to woo her. He had to work at it. He had to be persevere. They'll usually take that story and work it into their power positivity bullshit, right? Well, you know, she didn't like me at first. Yeah, she was fucking other guys. But she didn't like me at first, but I stuck with it, man. It's just like my same work ethic that I applied to my empire and my business and everything else. And I really stuck at She really didn't like me. But boy, after two years, she finally, I wore her down. And now look where we're at. She loves me to death and we have five kids. And I, like, that's not a success story, bro. That's not a success story. That's a horror story is what, it, what that is. What that tells me, I wouldn't go into a business with a guy like that. I would not go into a business with a guy who doesn't understand his value to women, like the threat, right? Like if you read in my first book, it's a chapter called The Threat. There's nothing that is more simultaneously threatening and arousing to women than a man who understands his own value to women. Sometimes that might be the, the waitress kind of giving you that smile and you go along with it. You know, and you don't dissuade it. You can kind of go along with it, right? You're not going to fuck the girl, but it doesn't mean you can't like that, 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 connection like that's social proof that's pre-selection right there if i see that fuck yeah i see that all the time when i'm with justin waller i'll go into business with you because he realizes what his value is and he embraces it and he leans into it now i know that he's also an honorable guy i also know he has integrity i know he he has earned my respect for sure but i'll tell you what man i would definitely not go into a business with that dude because that's the kind of guy who's going to get rolled when he's 75 years old because he's the, because the power behind the throne, because he left, because that was his blue pill mentality is where that dude is at. And probably unless he has a very traumatic experience, unless his wife says to him what Kim Kiyosaki said to, to Robert, I don't need you anymore. Until that moment. And that's a fucking hard red pill to swallow when you're 70 some odd years old, man. That's tough. Fuck. I would, I would, I'd be like, oh shit. Oh shit, my my greatest my my soulmate is now my my business competitor. My soulmate knows everything about my soulmate, right? Knows everything about me. My soulmate is 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 it's a hostile takeover by my soulmate, who I thought was supposed to love it. I was, you know, love and cherish till death do us part. No fucking way. 